The release of V-Rising's first expansion, The Secrets of Gloomrot, have not only brought massive changes to the land of Vardaren, but the developers have also adjusted progression and added huge quality of life changes into the game. Here are the most game-changing things that I wish I knew before starting my latest V-Rising playthrough. Number 1. Save your sawdust, grass, and pollen. The Gloomrod update brings a welcome overhaul for the paper press. Back in the day, the paper press was pretty useless because of the resource cost of actually turning paper into scrolls, into schematics. Thus, one of the best ways to get schematics before the update was to manually farm it in silver light. Nowadays, the paper press can be unlocked by beating Nikolaus the Fallen, and the refining costs for research materials have also been massively reduced. You can craft paper from refining plant fiber and sawdust, which are gonna get in abundance. Scrolls can be crafted from paper and coarse thread, and coarse thread can be crafted with pollen and plant fiber. Pollen can be acquired by putting any flower into a grinder, and if you start planting any seed as soon as you get them when you're in the early game, you're never gonna run out of pollen. Lastly, schematics can now be crafted by combining scrolls and tech scraps, which can be farmed quite easily in the new Gloomrod area. With this overhaul, gearing up for endgame is not as tedious as it once was as long as you save these materials starting from early game. Number 2. Coins are now tied to your progression. Aside from the research materials, coins have also been overhauled and now have three tiers. Bronze coins, which can be collected in Farbane, silver coins in the Denley farmlands, and gold sun coins, which can be found in silver light. These coins should be utilized as much as possible while progressing through the game because unlike in the past where these are mostly used for buying cosmetics, with the addition of the vendors which can be found in each of the three major areas, you can now also buy gems, seeds, materials, and most importantly, recipes. Your progression is not tied to RNG anymore. If you have enough of these coins, you can literally buy Blood Moon and Sanguine recipes straight up. If the recipes that you need are not available, you can simply wait for the shop to refresh and at some point you're gonna get everything you need. In addition, all of these coins can be minted through the fabricator so there's always going to be a way for you to make these coins and never run out. If you combine utilizing the coins to buy recipes with the previous tip, it's incredibly easy to reach endgame gear compared to pre-Gloomrot. Lastly, there's a vendor in North Gloomrot that sells ancestral weapon shards, but they trade with Onyx Tears, which is an endgame item that needs a lot of endgame resources to build. Number 3. Plant as soon as possible. Gardening is quite literally one of the most OP things that you can do to speed up your progression in V Rising, and if you're like me, you probably skip this part for some reason or another. There's no specific place in which to farm stuff like Fire Blossom, Ghost Shroom, or Snow Flower that's gonna give you a massive stack in one run, and you're gonna need a lot of them for potions. You can farm Blood Rose in the Gleaming Meadows, which is the domain of Pelora the Feywalker, but even then it's not gonna give you a lot of stacks. Cotton is one of the most important plants in the game because you use it for the Dawnthorn armor set and there are cotton farms scattered around in Dunley but every time you need them, you get afflicted with a garlic debuff which takes quite a while to run out even with the use of bear form and garlic resistance. By having a garden, every time you walk past it, you can just easily farm all of these plants and they regrow fairly fast. By starting the habit of planting and harvesting them in the early game, by the time you need to start using potions or crafting endgame armor, you're gonna have a whole stack of them that you wouldn't even know what to use them for. The rest can be thrown into the grinder, which will give you pollen to use for a coarse thread, which will be used in upgrading your papers into scrolls. With the Gloomrod update, the game now also allows us to plant indoors or on rooftops to protect our plants from other players, so there's absolutely no reason to not start gardening right from the very beginning. It'll only boost your progression for just a little bit of planting and harvesting every time you get back to your base. Number 4. If you're struggling with a boss, use switching. Some people might consider this strategy a cheese, but if you're a beginner player playing with a bunch of friends, you might not know that the bosses in V Rising scale based on the amount of players fighting it. For some bosses, this is not that big of a problem, they just take a bit longer to defeat. However, the thing with V-Rising bosses is that a lot of them summon adds, and the amount of summon scales with the amount of players fighting it. An example of this would be the Behemoth boss where if you get its health down to half, it summons a bear and a wolf to help it fight. If there's two players fighting, it summons two bears and two wolves and so on. A strategy that you can employ if you get stuck on these kinds of bosses is to have one of you fight it solo, Get its health as low as you can, then switch out before you die. 
Your friend will fight it, get it as low as they can, and switch out if they need to, and you can get back in with full health. Once you guys defeat the boss, players actually don't need to extract the viewblood themselves to get the rewards. They can just stand near the defeated boss when another vampire extracts the blood, and you will still get the recipes and spells unlocked from the boss. The strat works extremely well against again the Behemoth, Styx the Sunderer, Voltasia, and other similar type of bosses. Number 5. Craft Dust Collars from the Alchemy Table one of the things that I really disliked about V Rising in the past was that whenever you find somebody with high quality blood, you would need to pretty much walk them home to imprison them in a cell. This is not that much of a problem if you're on your horse, but in Silverlight there are enemies that can shoot you and knock you off of your horse, and even prevent you from getting back up, forcing you to go on a long escort mission while avoiding everybody so a straight fire arrow won't kill your prisoner to be. With the dust collar item, once you subdue a human, you can just press the item on your hotbar and as long as you have an empty prison cell in your castle, a swarm of bats will automatically take them into the cell without you even having to teleport home. Number 6. Use a Radiant Gruel to increase your prisoner blood quality. So, once you've got let's say a 98% blood quality prisoner in your cells, one thing that I didn't realize until close to the end of the game was that you could actually use an item called a Radiant Gruel to increase their blood quality by 1-2% to up to 100. These can be crafted through the alchemy table using Mutant Grease which drops from mutated enemies in Gloomrod and Plague Briars which are plants found in Gloomrod as well. The only catch with using a Radiant Gruel is that every time you feed it to a prisoner, there's a 35% chance that the prisoner will turn into a mutant, so it's always best to keep another prisoner of the same blood type whenever you attempt to get somebody to 100% blood quality. Number 7. Vampire Horses Yep, you heard that right, Vampire Horses are now a thing in V Rising. After upgrading your castle heart to level 4, you unlock the new Dominate Mount skill which will allow you to bind one of your horses to yourself. Once they become a vampiric horse, they become immortal and they also become summonable. Another thing that you can do is to craft a vampire horse saddle using the new leather working station, which will increase the vampiric horse's stats by 1, allowing you to travel incredibly fast across the map. No longer will you need to worry about your S tier horse dying in a fire because you can just resummon them again. Number 8. Shattered weapons have a chance to grant additional stats for resource gathering. So once you start unlocking shattered weapons around the Merciless Iron Tier and you've beaten Raziel the Shepherd who will give you the recipe for an Ancestral Forge, you'll gain access to weapons that can roll into giving you additional stats like spell power, attack speed, and stuff like that. One stat that has been useful for me until the end of the game is the resource gathering stat on one of my weapons. It can give you anywhere between an additional 12% to up to 24% in resource yielding bonus which easily stacks up and allows you to farm more efficiently. Speaking of farming efficiently, farm iron in the new iron cave. The haunted iron mine is no longer the only place nor the best place to gather iron from. On the right side of the northwestern teleporter in the Dunley farmlands, a new iron cave can be accessed by using the bear form. It contains regular and large iron nodes which will easily give you a lot of stacks of iron. Just be careful when farming here because if you're not in bear form or you accidentally hit one of the suspicious looking rocks in the area, you'll be attacked by small and large golems that protect the cave. Just stick with bear form when farming here and avoid accidentally hitting the sleeping golems and you'll never have an issue with running out of iron again. Number 10. Start a silk farm Once you start getting into the end game, you're going to need a lot of silk worms so you can craft silk for your armor. The only thing is a run through the spider cave which is where silk can be consistently gathered from only yields a little over one stack. The best way to gather silk today is by utilizing the vermin nest. By using fish bone which can be acquired from fish and mutant grease which can be acquired in gloomrot, you can get a bunch of spiderlings to spawn in your vermin nest allowing you to easily farm silkworms. You can even put servants near your vermin nest so they can kill the spiderlings for you while you just focus on collecting all the drops. Number 11. Easily change the color of an item by holding control to bring out a color wheel. This is a quality of life update for people doing base building. Let's say you have a light that you want to change the color of, you don't need to dismantle it and remake it with a different colored light anymore. Just hover over with your cursor, hold control on your keyboard, and the color wheel will pop out. Number 12. Place down carpets inside your castle. I recently just found out about this so I wanted to share it with you guys, but carpets actually provide a 15% bonus in movement speed when walking on them. I don't know why I've only heard of this now, but yeah, there you go. If you learned anything new or if there's anything you want to share, comment it down below. A like and a subscribe helps me out a lot, so if you enjoyed the video, consider giving a sub and a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.